The Rapture, 2023. Is it still possible? I believe it is. And why? Because the story of Esther. In fact, it's what the focus of today's video will be about. In fact, if you recall, in this video here, the Esther Wedding Ring Eclipse video, that Esther 218, and uniquely only demonstrated in the Greek Septuagint, that Esther is given a wedding feast that lasts seven days long. A perfect prophetic archetype of the rapture. And since that's the case, here's the kicker. It's in Esther 2.16 that we discover Esther goes before the king for this wedding feast during the 10th month of Tevet, which, pulling up this slide, begins December 13th and ends January 10th of 2024. What's also fascinating is that the king gives gifts to Esther, just as Esther 2.18 points out. Kind of interesting, the timing of the season, a season of giving gifts. And one reason why I believe if we could guess the month of which the rapture occurs, this would be the month, the month of the vet. Notwithstanding, this argument has some legs to walk with. What do I mean? Well, interestingly enough, the entire story of Esther is being played out right now. As the story of Esther takes place in Iran, the main bad guy is named Haman, and his plot to kill the Jews begins with his hatred against Mordecai, who is a Benjamite. And as we discovered in this video, born on an eclipse, both the Iranian leader, who tucked away in his name contains Haman, has a plot against Benjamin, a second name play on the fact that Mordecai was a Benjamite. And therefore the leader of Israel fits this pattern as well, who himself is also born on the eclipse. And so God has pointed these two world leaders out by having them both born on an eclipse. That's fascinating. In addition, some more celestial signs that God has used, even aside from our Esther eclipse that took place back in October. If you recall, we also had the Haman 2.0 eclipse or the Hitler eclipse back in April. And we called the Hitler eclipse for two reasons. For example, that eclipse marked Hitler's 134th birthday. It also was the same eclipse using the sorrow cycle that occurred the very same year Hitler came to power in 1933. And turn to this slide. And since we know that Hitler's plot was to exterminate the Jews the exact same plot as Haman, it's fascinating that that particular eclipse also occurred in the constellation of Pisces, which also was associated with Haman. And therefore, it was the Hitler Haman 2.0 eclipse, but also the Antichrist eclipse, as he will seek to exterminate the Jews as well. But what is the underlying theme between these two guys? Anti Semitism. And isn't that exploding on the global stage right now? Saints, this eclipse that God put in the sky for us pointed out the rise of anti-Semitism that we are witnessing right now. But don't forget, pinned to Haman from the story of Esther. Which brings me back to the Esther wedding ring eclipse. And ultimately, when Esther wedding feasts take place, the month of Tibet, when the king puts the crown on her head and gives her gifts. Celebrated with a made up feast on the spot that's seven days long, the Esther rapture. And so saints, I fully believe that right now is a viable window for the rapture. Could be wrong, definitely could be wrong. Take all things before the Lord first. However, because we see that God is using celestial signs to mark Iran and Israel, just as the story of Esther does, that there is merit to the rapture potentially taking place during the month of Tevet. And which is where I want to end today's video. I know this was short. I'm still in transition, moving from Kansas City to New Mexico. In fact, I'm in a hotel recording this video right now. Just signed a lease yesterday, but we're gonna get to home base here soon. And I want to thank you for all your prayers and support during this time. I love y'all. God bless. 
and Maranatha, King Jesus.